Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P1 paper from K from sorry from Edexcel International A level. Here we're told, given that the point A has coordinates four two and the point B has coordinates fifteen seven, we want to f uh, and that the line L1 passes through the points A and B. Find an equation for line one, giving your answer in the form px plus qy plus r equals zero, where p, q, and r are integers to be found. So we have two points A and B, somewhere up there. And there's a line that passes through both of these points. Let me make that line thinner. So there's a line that passes through those two points, A and B. And that line is called line L. Okay, so this is line L. Okay, so the, we want to find the equation of this line L. Okay, and it's L1 in fact. All right, so to find the equation of a straight line, we need two things. So for to find the equation of a straight line, we need two pieces of information. Okay, two pieces of information. One, we need to know the gradient of the line. We have to know the gradient of the line. And two, we need to know any point on the line, any point on the line, any point on the line. It has to be on the line. Okay, as for the points on the line, we have two of them. We have 4, 2, and we have 15, 7. So we can choose either of them. I will choose 4, 2, because it looks like it's an easier set of numbers to use. As for the gradient, well, to find the gradient between two points, so if I want to find the gradient between A and B, so I'll call that the gradient of line 1. Okay, I just need to find the change in Y over the change in X. So the gradient of line 1 is equal to the change in Y over the change in X. So we have the point A, which is 4, 2, and the point B, which is 15, 7. So we can do 7 minus 2 over 15 minus 4. That will give you the gradient of line 1. That, that's going to give you 7 minus 2 is 5. 15 minus 4 is 11. Okay, so five, 5 over 11 is the gradient. So the gradient of line 1 is 5 11. Okay, so we want to find the equation for the line 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a formula. which This is what, the way I prefer. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. So Y minus the Y coordinate of this point 2 equals m, which is 5 over 11, times x minus the x coordinate of the point, which is 4. Okay, so the y coordinate of the point that you chose goes here. So that's 2 goes here, and the x coordinate goes here. Remember, this is the x, this is the y coordinate. So now we can, we want it in this form where we want to have p, q, and r as integers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by 11 at this stage. That makes life very easy for us. So if 11, 11 y minus 22, 11 times y, 11 times 2, equals, if I multiply this side by 11, the 11 cancels, and I've got it left with 5, so 5x minus 20. So we want it in this form. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, okay, I'll leave 0 on this side, and I'm going, I've got 5x here already. I want 11y to be removed from this side, so I'll subtract 11y from both sides. I've got negative 20, and I'm going to add 22 to get rid of the 22 from here, so it's going to be plus 2. So writing in a way that looks nicer, 5x minus 11y, okay, and we're going to put it plus 2 equals 0. This is the equation of line 1. So this is line 1 for you. Okay, so that's the answer to part, um, uh, part, part A. Now, a lot of people will use y equals mx plus c, and I'll show you how that also works. So they would use this formula. And they would put here instead of y, the y coordinate, here instead of x, instead of m, the gradient, instead of x, they'll put the, the x coordinate, and then they'll find what c is. So they'll have 2, 2 equals 20 over 11 plus c, so they'll say that c is equal to, that's going to be 22 over 11 minus 20 over 11, which is 2 over 11, and they'll say then y equals mx plus c, so y equals two, uh, 5 over 11 
x plus 2 over 11. They'll multiply both sides by 11, so they'll have 11. y equals 5x plus 2. And they'll say 5x minus 11y plus 2 equals 0. You'll get the same answer. And whether you use 4, 2, or 15, 7, doesn't matter. As long as you do the right thing, you'll still get the same answer. I much prefer this uh, way of dealing with things, as you'll see later on in your math life. It'll probably make things easy for you when you have more complicated type of questions. Right, and then it says the line L2 passes through A and is parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to just make a little diagram here. There's the x-axis down here. There's a line that passes through A. Okay, and it's parallel to the x-axis. Now remember, the coordinates of A are 4, 2. Okay, so this is the, the line L2. They said the point C lies on L2 such, to, to such that the length of BC is 5 root 5. So there's a point C somewhere on line 2. Okay, and the length between B and C is 5 root 5. Okay, so it's asking us to find both possible pairs of coordinates of the point C. Okay, so basically, the distance between B and C is 5 root 5. Okay. The distance between B and C is 5 root 5. So you can see very clearly that there's going to be two possible places for C for that to be true. Okay, so it could be that this length is 5 root 5 here. It could be that this length is 5 root 5 there. That's one possible value for C, a place for C. That's another possible place for C. Okay, so C has coordinates uh, um, X and the y coordinate of A is 2. Okay, so the coordinates of C are x2. And there's two possible places that you can two possible values for x. You have x here or x there. Right? So how do we find um, those two possible values of x? Well, we can set up an equation. Because I know that the point um, B has coordinates, as we're told, 15, 7. Okay, and I know that, that point A has coordinates x and 4. Or is it 2 or 4? x and 2, sorry, x and 2. Okay, the, the, coordinates, sorry, the coordinates of point C, not, not A, the coordinates of point C are x and 2. Okay, so x we've got to find, there's two possible values for x, but I know that the magnitude of the length between B, C, is equal to 5 times root 5. Okay, so if I use the distance formula, okay, I can say that x minus 15 squared plus 2 minus 7 squared is equal to 5 root 5 squared. Okay, by Pythagoras' theorem, okay, basically, I know that this distance, okay, so this is B, which is, um, this is the point B, which is 15, 7, okay, so I know that this distance here, which is x minus 15, or 15 minus x, okay, squared, plus this distance here, which is like 7 minus 2, or 2 minus 7, doesn't matter, squared, is equal to this squared by Pythagoras' theorem, okay, so I, I know that um, you know, I can use Pythagoras' theorem here. So this squared, this length squared, which is the difference between the x coordinates, x minus 15 or 15 minus x. And this distance here, which is the difference between the y coordinates, which is 7 minus 2 or 2 minus 7, doesn't matter. The square of those two will give you the square of the hypotenuse, which is 5 root 5 all squared. Okay, so we can set up this equation and we can solve this. So an easy way to solve this equation would be not to expand this for now, because we have a square bracket which was convenient. So x minus 15 squared plus 2 minus 7 is minus 5. Minus 5 all squared is positive 25. Now if you square this, you're going to have 5 squared, which is 25, and root 5 squared, which is 5. Okay, so you end up with x minus 15 squared is equal to, that's 125 minus 25, which is 100. Right? Because when you multiply 5 by 25, you get 125. You've got to take away 25. That gives you 100, which means x minus 15. And this is where you have to be careful. 
You take the square root of both sides. The square root of 100 could be either positive or negative 10. Okay, so x is going to be either 15 plus 10 or 15 minus 10. So x is going to be 25 or x is going to be 5. So the two possible points of C, you have C, it can either be 5 and 2 or the alternative is 25 and 2. So those are the two possible values of C uh, or coordinates of C such that the length between B and C is 5 root 5. And now for part C of this question, it says, hence find the minimum possible area of the triangle ABC. So ABC basically could either be um, this big length here. Let me get the line out, really sorry. So it could either be this triangle here, it could be A, B, C, okay, or the other possibility is that it could be this triangle here, and of course, which is the smaller triangle? The one with the less base, the base which is shorter. So this is going to be the one which gives us the minimum possible area this triangle over here. Okay, so we have to think about the area of this triangle here. And the area of this triangle is a half times the base times the height. Now the base is from A to C dash and we want this, we want the C, C to be the five. We want it to be five. Okay, because this is the one that's 25. This is one that's five. So from, this is from four to five. Because this is four, this is five, that's one. And this is from 2, this is from 2 to where B is, the coordinates of B were, I can't see it very well here, the coordinates of B are 15, 7. So the height of this is from, this is 15, 7, so the height of this is from 7 minus 2, which is 5. So you have a triangle that looks like this. Now a lot of people get mixed up with these triangles, how do we find the area of this triangle? It's really easy. Some people try to use the three coordinates and they use the shoelace method and things like that and they make things very complicated. You have to understand from your basic understanding of IGCSE maths how to find the area of a triangle. It's a half times the base times the height and the triangle doesn't have to be right angled. You just have to know the distance between the vertex and the base. So this is the distance between the vertex and the base. Okay, this distance here. Okay, so this is the perpendicular height Okay, and in this case, it's five units. And in this case, this is one unit. This is from four to five. So the area of this triangle is a half times the base times the vertical height. So it's a half times one times five, which is 2.5 square units. So we have to understand how to find the area of a triangle. Okay, this is a very common question that I get, and it's something that needs to be addressed. So for example, just like a little example here, you have one, two, three, four triangles. All of these have the same area. And to find the area of each of these triangles, you need a half times the base times the vertical height. Okay, so they don't have to be right angle triangles. This is the vertical height of this triangle. Okay, from here to here. Okay, that's the vertical height of this triangle. Okay, this is the vertical height of this triangle. This one is a right angle triangle. This is the vertical height of that triangle. This is the vertical height of that triangle, up to where the base is. So a half times the base times the height, all of these have the same area. So it doesn't have to be just be a right angle triangle, half times base times height. It could be like this. As long as you know the distance from the vertex to the base, even if the vertex is off the base like this, they all give the same area. Okay, so to find the area of this triangle, if you know this length and that length, half times one times five will give you its area. You don't need to use this shoelace method for something simple as this. Okay, there's no need. All the questions you get in these type of you know problems will all be ones where you can just use exactly this type of method here. This is something important for you to understand. Anyway, that concludes this question. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist. 
which will appear on the top right of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of, uh, this is, what is it, I, guess, I guess it's straight line graphs, okay, can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and over here you'll find a video which uh, shows you how to use my channel effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.